Welcome to the channel, my name is Barry. Today we're going to be having a look at starter motor out of a 2005 Vectra C. Went out on Monday morning, pretty cold morning. Put the key in, turned it, the starter motor did half a revolution and died. Now we need to take the bits, find out what's going on, get it back together. I have, I have got some parts here that I have bought a new set of brushes to go with it because I do believe it's the contact between the, the solenoid down here and the input pin to the motor there should be a small braid of wire in between here and it looks as though it's just rotted off and dropped off when I picked the part up this afternoon you can see in there the new spade with a braid on it the man at auto diesel did tell us it's a fairly common fault with these motors so we want to tear it down we want to put the parts in test it get it back in the car hopefully job fixed right then to get this off the car we need a 13 mil socket This bottom stud, it's got a, an, an end piece on it that goes actually a bottom stud, it goes on the car that way. This stud with the 13mm nut on is for your earth wires. So you put that in, all your earth wires go on, so you take this nut off first, take your two earth wires off, then go back in and loosen this nut but leave it leave it in place for the moment you then come up here there's 13 mil nut on the back of this i forgot to say always disconnect your battery i actually took mine out but always disconnect your battery this connection is direct link full ampage full voltage back to your battery there is no fuse in this line so before you start messing on with this with spanners Go upstairs, take your battery off, disconnect it both terminals, come back under the car, 13mm spanner on here, take your live feed off from here. On this one we have 10mm, might actually be 11 no it's 10 I have a 10mm nut. This is your solenoid activation wire. This comes from a relay inside the fuse box next to your battery. Which if you open the battery box up, start at the front of the car, you've got a big red relay inside the fuse box and you've got a, a, the first yellow one next to the red is the relay that controls this. So it goes on that terminal there. So you've got Earth's terminal here, line feed from battery here, and you've got your solenoid control lead here. These all need to be disconnected. Next one, 13 mil nut in here. But this is a bit tricky to get to. You've got to go, there's a bracing bar positioned here. I haven't filmed this under the car for obvious reasons because it's just far too dark and impossible to do, trying to hold the phone and get the job done but there's a bracing bar here that holds the water reservoir in place so you take the bracing bar out which gives you access to come up here and along into here with the socket and a short extension because you need an extension to get you from here to here 13 mil take that out take your bottom one out while your starter motor starter motor comes out it sounds easy it isn't it's probably again I spent about two hours on Thursday morning yes Thursday morning jacking the car up to put a set of ramps underneath because the distance from the front wheel to the front of the bumper bar is too great that you can't drive the car up onto the ramps because the ramps contact the bumper bar first however that wasn't really an issue because the car wouldn't start so I had to jack the car up 
push the ramps underneath the car. So they're under there. Now, so what we're going to do now, you need 13 mil spanner. This is your connection from the solenoid. This sends your cranking voltage once the solenoid is being activated down to the motor. This is the link that's broken. I knew when I was sitting in the car that it was a, a, an earthing problem because the solenoid wasn't even clicking. Normally if you've got, you can have a sticky starter motor, your flat battery, but your starter, your solenoid will still click as it tries to engage. It's just not enough voltage to turn the engine. So, we take that off. That's the broken, that should be a piece of braid on the bottom of here to this terminal here. It's gone, it's rotten. Next, 10 mil spanner. No, sorry, seven mil. These are seven mil. They're not particularly tight. They don't need to be particularly tight. They just make sure they're not going to come back out. We're going to put them back in with a little bit of Loctite. Keep them in place. Back these out. This can then separate from the solenoid unit and the Bendix unit. Leaving us with the barrel of the motor. What we're going to do now, we're going to remove the armature from the barrel. If you push the armature with your thumb, there's permanent magnets in this case. So as you push, it wants to stay inside because of the magnetism. But just push it out gently. Careful when you do push it out. Push it out, take it off completely. This is the brush gear. The brush gear and this terminal are one. So this all needs to come off. To get this off, Phillips screwdriver. Remove the two little screws that are holding the bearing cap on. One. Lift the bearing cap off. Inside the bearing cap is like horseshoes. It looks like an E-clip, but it's not a spring one. It's just simply a collar that slides into the groove that keeps the armature in place. There's a washer on there that comes off. The cap lifts off. This gets you down to the brush gear. The brush gear from here simply pulls off. As you pull it off the brushes will come out of the mount because they're all spring loaded. These will come out of the mounts but it doesn't matter because we have a full replacement one here. So we'll just tip that off nice and easy. There we go. The brushes have popped. Some of the One of the springs has come out. One of the holders has come off. Don't throw that away just yet. As with everything that I take the bits and put back together, I don't throw anything away till the job's complete. So, if things are wipe, make sure they're clean. There's my glasses. Right, I've got them. Right. Have a look at it. There's some marks in here in the armature windings. If we turn it round, similar marks on the opposite end, opposite side. The only thing I because I've had a look inside the barrel there. 
there is no sign in the barrel of damage or contact. So the only thing I can think of with these is that these are balanced. These have been cut out of manufacturer in order to balance the armature. A bit of muck in there. Get that out very carefully. It's the only thing I can think of. So let's have a look at our parts. Rang up a local car spare shop the other day. Replacement starter motor, 94 quid. Brush set, nine pound. So that's why we're fixing it. And you can see here, got the braid, terminal. I thought these were soldered together here, because I had tried to unsolder. Where's it? Where's it? I had tried to unsolder this one. Again, when I spoke to the guy who ordered diesel, he's telling me these are actually brazed together. Which is why I couldn't get it off with my soldering iron. Placement brush set comes with a very easy installation method here, a little plastic bush in the middle. Right, we'll just have to do a quick change here. The brushes came with this in the middle. <laughs> Keeps the brushes in the holders while you're fitting them over the commutator. As you can see, um, just maybe, it's just not big enough. So what I've done, no way of getting the socket. The so outside diameter of the socket is the same size as the commutator. So I'm going to put that into there, just very gently. Very gently, you'll feel it go on. There you go, on. Jobs are good. Now, we need to start and put this back together now. So, what do we need? We need what end cap. Put our end cap on. A little square section here goes into the back of the rubber like so then we need the washer on and we need the horseshoe clip on so like that bearing cap pops up little screws just nipped don't forget that these literally are just fastening into the back of that bit of tin plate so don't get all heavy handed with it now case Get the groove in the case, lines up with the, just checking here, having a look in here, making sure that those brushes are running on the same place as the old brushes, turn it gently, listen for any problems, feel for any problems. Now, put this back together, this will want to dive into here because of the magnets there we go put that in make sure it's in make sure it's going to turn right <clears throat> so cut out here for the base of the solenoid Right. 
Now, this wire now goes onto that terminal like such. Not. This isn't sitting well at the minute. Right. Gotta pop in my body screws. And I'm just going to pop them in with a tiny little dot of Loctite. Tiny little bit. In. Tiny little bit. There we go. Don't forget those these don't need to be tight. We just need to hold everything together. Jobs are good. So tomorrow, because it's getting late now, what we're going to do tomorrow? Earth connection onto the body here. Twelve volt positive connection onto here. Put another twelve volt wire to here. By connecting this, it should fire off the solenoid, which will kick the Bendix in. Should also pull the solenoid back, connect these two cables, set the motor away. So we'll do that tomorrow. We'll test it tomorrow, get a bat in the car, job to gun. Right, we're quickly going to test the starter motor. 12 volt positive in, earth, control lead. Put 12 volts into the control lead, it'll activate the solenoid. Throwing the Bendix forward, pulling the plunger and the solenoid back to connect the heavy 12 volt voltage here. This will activate the starter motor. Let's see if this works then. Lovely, tell your mother. Right, we'll now get this back in the car. Car back on the road, job done. 